Let's talk about it with the better minds. Former Obama campaign advisor, Amisha Cross. Former Trump communications director, Brian Lanza. Conservative strategist, Rena Shaw. Um, first, let's, let's start uh, with what we saw from Harris. Amisha, I, I want your take on uh, two things. One, I guess she's talking about the trades. I don't know why she wasn't talking more full-throated about the trades. You know, the artists in class used to be the proudest part of the labor force I in America. So I want to know what the play is there and what is your take on the significance of former President Obama hitting the hustings? Where does he h help and how? Well, Chris, I think you heard a different message than I did, and I was watching it live as well. Um, Kamala Harris made it clear that she was talking about engineering um, and bringing jobs, bringing American jobs back, ensuring that our engineering structure, which helped to build the middle class, which helped to build the workforce across this country, made in America, making that a real claim again, and ensuring that those individuals can be tooled, can be skilled to get those jobs. And those jobs historically and present day don't require a college degree. But she also talked about eliminating some of the degree requirements for federal jobs as well, which we've seen happen. In, in government across multiple states, Democrat and Republican-led states, um, over the past few months. That's part of her opportunity economy agenda. And I do think that there's something to be said about Americans, Gen Z particularly, moving away from college education and wanting to go straight into the workforce. This provides a level of opportunity for individuals who are not going to be saddled with student loan debt. That is a net positive for our country. I think that towards the second point of the question, um, her campaign has done a very good job of getting information out, of showcasing what a um, what a Kamala Harris administration could look like. But for Barack Obama, this isn't a new thing. He has a habit of coming along towards the end of campaign cycles to endorse and support candidates on the campaign trail. Because this is a more truncated campaign, he's doing it a little earlier than he did in 2020 when he came out for Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. He's doing it a little earlier than he did in 2016 for Hillary Clinton. But him coming out on the campaign trail with the star power he has, he's the biggest star of the Democratic Party and has been since he ran in 2008. I, I think that it's going to make a difference. Brian Lanza, do you like the play that Trump is doing here? He's going, he's in the right place, but is he saying the right thing? Um, you, you, can, you can disagree with me if you want, but you'll be wrong. Uh, money was not given to migrants that was supposed to go for relief. There is not a billion dollars missing, okay? Those are facts, so let's just stipulate to those. But the messaging, going there saying, hey, I know you're hurting, the federal government screwed up. Why is that a good message? Well, because it's true. I think people leave felt, felt behind over there in North Carolina and Georgia. I mean, if you look at what first happened with the, with respect to the to the hurricane, you know, Joe Biden was on the beach hanging out, getting sun. Kamala Harris was in San Francisco and Los Angeles raising money. And so it's President Trump who went there and sort of recognized that these people were feeling left behind. They were feeling ignored by the Democratic administration. And so he went in there and highlighted the issue. And he highlighted the fact that people are being left behind. And that's a problem. And and Joe Biden has clearly took seven days to get there. That's that's he, that's even longer than George W. Bush did in Katrina. This is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's Katrina, and they failed to meet the natural disaster test. And people are left behind. And, you know, I, you know whether we want to talk about, you know, shortages, what we do know is, is that, that FEMA is requesting more money because there are shortages because it's been spent on other factors. So they didn't clearly put no. the priorities of hurricanes no. ahead what of Mayorkas everybody else. No, what said, my, and it's a distinction with a difference. Look, I'm not here to argue for the last. I'm just here to argue what we know. Mayorkas did not say that. He said we have enough money now but the season isn't over yet, and they're going to have to think about Correct. allocating more money. So, come on, Brian. But, Rena. No, no. Um, Chris, you just made my he, point. They're running out of money. No, you made it sound like they don't have enough for Helene, and that's not what Mayorkas took the time to come out to say that's not the case. I'm just saying the truth is enough. The truth is enough. That's all I'm saying. So, Rena, the question becomes for you. I get that he's in the right place, Okay. Presence matters in politics, no question about it. I mean, it's not like he's down there like Representative Luna was, walking around with people and actually helped, but that's fine. <clears throat> uh, he's right that he's on the spot. But the message, FEMA stole money, FEMA gave it to the illegals, is that what makes a conservative proud these days? Let me just say this. These times are obviously unconventional, but because this is an ahistorical run that Harris and Walls are trying to pull off here, it makes it tougher for the truth to stick out. And that's where Trump gets his opening. So I'm not calling what happened, unfortunately, up and down the mid-Atlantic seaboard, Asheville down to Treasure Island, Florida, 
devastation of, for our fellow Americans, right? It's not the October surprise. It's the October window that I was looking for for Trump to get at some point. And this is where Trump, unfortunately or fortunately, succeeds. In moments of crisis, he shows up. It was this time, October 2017, when he is president, showed up in Puerto Rico, which I was aghast to see the images of him tossing paper towels at people as if they were just peasants. My gosh, it was bizarre. But hey, it was a situation where just like the year prior, he showed up and that's where he thinks he succeeds. And so right now, what the American right is doing is really nailing Harris Walls. And I think unfairly by saying that the $750 she talked about per person or per family, please fact check me on that one. Yeah. They are taking issue with that because they feel like that's a minuscule amount compared to the two billion our federal government just ports over to Ukraine. So see, that's I also am, not true. I'm obviously but, endorsing Harris, yeah. right? But this moment is difficult, and unfortunately, kind of make Trump. It kind of makes Trump look better, and I hate to say it, but right. I do think Harris Walls can counter it. Well, no, look, I think that presence matters, and Amisha, to you, um, I don't know why Harris isn't trying to own the storm. And own. I don't. I don't know why she didn't take the opportunity. I don't know why Biden doesn't want to go out hot and wind up spending time uh, down there. That seems to me like a mistake. But them playing the same tune, the Trump camp, of just straight BS to make people angry, where do you see the plus minus? Should they have been there? Does the message make it net neutral? Well, first and foremost, I think there is some fact checking that needs to be done here because it is not as though the Harris Walls campaign or the Biden administration are ignoring um, the facts of this disaster or the devastation they're in. What they have acknowledged is that in many places, because of unfortunately the now two assassination attempts against President Trump. Going to some of these areas requires that there are law enforcement um, that are going to be moved away from, and, and emergency uh, services that are going to be moved away from the process of taking care of these victims, the very real reality that they're facing in many of the local areas that are going to be directed towards um, protecting of the president. And that is a very functional reality. So in the immediate aftermath, it was a decision that was made, hey, are we going to, and are we willing to remove those, that level of status and services from those individuals to be redirected towards the president when it should be directed towards those individuals who are facing that devastation right now. In addition to that, we it. know that there are plans to I, go down. He's already, both of the camp, his campaign I know. or her campaign but, but, has already stated that she's going to visit and Biden has already said he's going I know, to visit. But Amisha, Amisha, when you're explaining, as we all know, the corollary to that, you're losing because nobody cares about the fact that you're going to have a big footprint as president when you are going to acknowledge that a place needs to be the national focus. This has always well, been the well, measure. That, I'm old enough that to remember Hurricane Katrina. That's assuming that the president cannot direct those services from a phone call at the White House. That's assuming a lot that is, quite frankly, incorrect it when it comes to directing Wait, the services on. and the energy hold needed on. to protect these individuals. Hold on. Amisha, what am I missing? Tell me about when a president of the United States has said, I want to go to the scene of a natural disaster and been told, no, you can't go, so it didn't happen. That was not my argument at all. My argument was, as it was what stated, is? that there are services that would have to be moved significantly in some of these I areas. I know, but and so what? what? Is that they're so what? Dangerous, you go that because the, the people there want to be all recognized. Of the services needed from FEMA I get in addition it. to several public it. and other sector services to these areas. I get showing it, up for but press, everybody showing goes. Showing up for a photo op and a press conference is not as vital as ensuring that these individuals get the services that they need at this point. <clears throat> Brian Lanza, if they had been there before Trump and said, see, he didn't even come down here, would you have seen that as bad or would you have said, well, he didn't want to expand the footprint for first responders? That would have sucked. That would have been a horrible image on national television. If, you know, President Biden and Vice President Harris were there and President Trump was, let's say, in Texas raising money from rich donors. That would have been a horrible image. The, the reality is, is these people in Georgia, these people in Florida, the people in North Carolina, they wanted, their, they wanted their plight highlighted. They felt left behind. They felt the government wasn't reacting fast enough. They felt state resources weren't there. And what they saw was a leadership moment. And tre President Trump stepped into that leadership moment. And Joe Biden hung out at the beach. And Kamala Harris hung out in, in San Francisco and in Los Angeles with our rich Hollywood. Well, they were both. They were, not they, the they both hit Georgia. In present, the reality is that in former President Trump, you have someone who has fought against climate science, who has fought against climate change, who advocated while he was in office and pushed People to have money dying. redirected from FEMA to other services. No, that People is 100 percent. People were dying and they didn't bother to show who, up. Who does not believe in People and was made fun of and they didn't and bother to show up. a little hurricane. The man who called it a little Listen, hurricane 
should not be out yeah, here right. being claimed as a victor for the actual um, devastation or the people who are Unreal. suffering. This is a man who didn't even think that this hurricane mattered. Unreal. Listen, I, I get it. You are right. Amisha's not wrong with anything she's saying. It's just that now it needs to be presented because something as simple as just being there takes up a lot of the space. Um, before we go, and I do, it's well argued, Amisha. I don't disagree with you. It's just about the, what's, what's the reality in politics? Perception. That's all I'm saying. Rena, yep. um, in terms of you're, you're talking about something very important. Do you believe in October surprise anymore? Or is like every day a surprise because of how saturated the media is now? I, I believe anything is possible because, I mean, that is what political strategists in this moment have seen is like we have not been used to these kind of circumstances. There's no look back we can do to say, here's how we guide through this. I mean, look, I, I take both of my co-panelists points really seriously here. These are really important points they're making and they both are correct. But one thing is true. When you're a political communicator, again, that perception is reality. I would have put my candidate on a helicopter, been like, let's go tour. Let's just jump up there in the Sky President Biden, and let's go look over the devastation just to let people know, be felt, be heard, be seen, because that's what the electorate needs right now. But going a step further, Chris, I mean, there's just so much that can be said about this race. There are Dems right now conceding that Kamala has lost momentum. I push back on that big time. This is, again, a condensed timeline she's running in every day. Well, matters. The, Vegas, the Vegas betting line changed, Brina, and that is a bad fact. Now, it can change again. Totally, totally true. Yeah. But when the Vegas guys start moving in a direction, it's not like some dope like me just deciding that she's lost momentum. It's a little different. You're, you're right on that point. But look, it was already changing in August. I was sitting there getting anxiety, which I never get as a political person. <laughs> but, you know, I was like having a moment with it. And this is what we need to do is expect the unexpected. Look where the leadership is coming from. People ask me every day of the week, Rena, how are you as a lifelong Republican okay with Harris and Walls? How can you support those policies? We've been out here, some of us Republicans, trying to slay this dragon for eight years. Chris, I'm not tired. Next week, three of my friends are going to be going up to Pennsylvania. Alyssa Farrah Griffin, Liz Cheney, Cassie Hutchinson. They're going to look directly in the faces of Pennsylvania men and women and say, we need to defeat him. The only argument here is that she is not him. So Harris is worth our vote. She's mm. worth showing up for because she's not him. If we slay this dragon this time, we get rid of Trumpism once and for all. I, I Look, your party's got its problems. This is all a function of choice. But I will say this. The reason I've never seen Lanza smile this long, this much, and I've talked to him plenty, is because I got to tell you, if you think... Kamala Harris wins, and the explanation is because she's not Trump. This ain't the last election, okay? It's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough, but we'll see what happens. I can't, man, the convention seems like so long ago when we were going through that. Amisha Cross was carrying me like a Sherpa, the way Dusty carries me on this show every night, telling me everything I need to know. And here we are in October. No more surprises, but if there are any, because I don't know if we can be surprised anymore. Harris has got to be careful because you will not shock your way out of the Trump movement. That's for sure. Brian Lanza, thank you very much. Amisha Cross, thank you for carrying me then and now. And Rena Shaw, appreciate you and well argued as always. Have a very good weekend.